My name is Lorna Rose and I'm a creative producer at Talking on Corners and co-curator of Ritual Touch, a group exhibition at Mirror featuring artists Monica Shanter, Gladys Paulus and Ingrid Pollard. My name is Dr Ella S Mills, I'm an art historian and researcher, I teach at the University of Plymouth and I'm the creative director of Talking on Corners and I co-curated Ritual Touch with Lorna Rose. Uh, the thinking behind this exhibition was a uh, slow burn and the ideas came about quite organically. Conversation is a core concept within the work of Talking on Corners and Lorna and I knew that we wanted to have this as an integral thread within this exhibition. We felt that having three artists in conversation with one another was a really lovely way of illustrating how artworks that have had no previous connections um, can speak to one another. And we also wanted to show artists uh, that had connections to the southwest of England. Our aim uh, was to develop an exhibition that focused on artist making and we wanted to highlight materiality and the significance of processes in creating. We had wanted to show Death is a Place by Monica Shanta for a while but in the right setting. When we learned of the endurance required when Monica performs the plaiting live it created for us another level to the idea of making, um, that of making as a ritual. There are a lot of tactile objects included in this exhibition that highlight the artist's physical touch in making. They are Monica Shanta's plaiting, Gladys's handmade charcoal and felt, and the lace in Ingrid's work and her manipulation of images in the light boxes. But as well as thinking about touch in the material object, we, we felt that the objects also conceptually embody touch as a kind of cathartic process of healing through ritualistic making. Monica Shanta's work, Death is a Place, is a response to death and historical instances of genocide. We felt the plaiting spoke to ideas of ritual as something both intimate but also nurturing, reflecting life as being something that's woven and rewoven. In terms of touch, Monica integrates her whole self into the installation as an embodiment of repetitive, perpetual presence. For Monica, death has no location, it's not an end, it's transformative. Rituals are also transformative and can be continuous or repetitive. Monica describes the plaiting, performing of plaiting, as both a ritual and an endurance. There's something about the scale of the hair installation that's really alluring. From a distance, the hair creates the illusion of like being a black hole or a pit, and hair generally has multiple meanings. It thins and transforms as we age, and we may lose our hair completely from illness or treatments and yet hair is one of the things that survives our death and it continues to grow for a short period after we die. Touching hair is also a really intimate act, but it's not always welcome. Hair can have deep cultural significance and symbolise a range of traditions. Gladys Paulus's pieces in the exhibition are part of a larger series of work entitled Hinterland from 2017 which she describes as a ritual of mourning and healing in response to the death of her father. The works have been produced using slow, intensive creative practices where each piece is laboriously handmade over a number of weeks and sometimes months. When we visited Gladys's studio, we were really struck by the range of processes that she uses in the work and how the physicality of felting, embroidery, charcoal making, and growing plants for dyeing materials all call for extensive time and patience and the ability to work with and through the rituals of making. In that first meeting, she told us how in the creation of these works, she'd started to notice patterns in her work processes and that once she became aware of them, they became really integral to the work. We were really drawn to how the processes and rhythms surrounding her practice, for instance in her felt making, were as integral as the practice of making itself. We felt that her engagement with rhythmic processes of making were also echoed in the rhythm of plaiting in Monica's work and the detailed lace making in Ingrid's work. So in terms of being in the Ritual Touch exhibition, Gladys's work is incredibly tactile. The works draw the viewer in and evoke a powerful emotional and physical response. In this exhibition, one of the common responses from audiences has been the desire to get close to and touch the artworks, whether this be the charcoal and felted costumes, the plaiting installation, or picking up of one of Ingrid's bark boxes. 
We can tell it's hard for audiences when they're asked not to touch within such a tactile exhibition. So with Ingrid Pollard's work, uh, I had finished a project um, that had commissioned Ingrid for um, the exhibition Three Drops of Blood, which was at the Thelma Hulbert Gallery in Honiton. And it was August to October uh, 2022. And the works uh, featured in Ritual Touch are part of that wider series of work. When Lorna and I were in conversation about the project, we were drawn to Ingrid's discussion of the importance of touch in telling stories and creating knowledge. Ingrid speaks about a resonance of being in her work and we felt that the objects shown in Ritual Touch carry a resonance of being through their historical labour which transcends space and time. Ingrid is very interested in the compression of space and time and that history isn't something in and of the past but active and, and felt in the present. And Lorna and I felt very much that these themes spoke to our ideas in, in Ritual Touch. The original work for Three Drops of Blood involved nearly two years of research from Ingrid in making these works. Parts of the project that she explored were lace making, including the renowned Honiton lace. And she also did quite a lot of research at the unique historical collections of books at the Devon and Exeter Institution. Lorna and I thought about the lace and the, the ritual and the endurance of lace making alongside the materiality of the exquisite craftsmanship of the, the bark boxes or the book boxes that are featured in Ritual Touch, made by Malcolm Robertson for Ingrid. Lorna and I were really intrigued by how Ingrid's work led us to think about how the act of touch can shift power. And just the very act of Ingrid bringing these objects into existence has revisited and reclaimed and rewritten um, histories and knowledge as a way to heal historical wounds. Some of the books in the Devon and Exeter Institution where she'd done her research you know, haven't been touched for years, um, maybe a hundred. And so just by Ingrid lifting those certain books off a shelf and touching their spines and leafing their pages, she has changed the kind of makeup of that institution and the histories that they hold. We really hope that audiences take the same kind of level of joy um, that we did in creating new conversations with, with the art and through the artworks. But also it's, it's not just about creating new conversations, um, it's about recognising conversations can take place without us. So with this exhibition we're inviting audiences to join existing conversations. We'd also really love for audiences to take pleasure in making connections between the different objects through their materials and through their stories and find some joy in looking at and being with these art objects. So we'd really like audiences to come away with some new knowledge about history, culture and humanity. There are some really poignant pieces included in this exhibition that demonstrate the richness of history but also of making. And something I'd like audiences to be able to take away is how we can tell stories that are emotionally charged in really quiet but powerful ways. Mm -hmm.